Oh, sorry. Just over here reviewing what NASCAR had to say about that restart. Three, two, one. What's up, everyone? Todd Brown, That Racing Show. Thanks for dropping by for this Pit Stop segment. Man, I'm going to tell you, if you've ever wanted to watch any of my episodes, this is probably the one that you want to check out. Following Richmond. Um, man, I got a lot of opinions on this. I know a lot of people have covered this. Obviously, I myself, I took a couple of days just to sit back, let it marinate, and uh, basically digest and dissect everything that happened. Uh, for me personally, anybody that's followed my show, you know, Man, I'm a Truex fan. Been a Truex fan uh, for a lot of years. I used to be friends with a lot of the uh, pit crew members on the one car when I was over there at DEI. Used to party with them guys after the races until the sun come up. And uh, was fortunate enough to become Martin's body double in commercials. And uh, also worked with him on other commercials outside of that. And uh, man, on Sunday, I pulled for the 19. No doubt about it. Um, I love everybody out there. I respect every driver out there. But the 19 car is the one that I want to see win every week. And obviously, oh, everything that happened Sunday kind of pissed me off in certain ways. But uh, we're going to get to that here in just a second. But before we get to any of that, I want to start out with the things that happened on Saturday because um, obviously Joey Gase having a bad day, showing, showing his temper, putting it out there. And, uh, you know, I did a little short on this. And a lot of people commented there's little comments on the uh, on the short there saying that it was bad sportsmanship and somebody said he looked like he was 12 there was different things about this and everything else and this is what i want to start out with right here because um i've been fortunate enough to be in the garage area with joey and film these guys and uh see the work that goes into this and i want everybody to understand right now that joey gase is completely different than your Chase Elliott's or your Denny Hamlin's or anything like that for more than one reason. And one of the biggest reasons is because he foots his own bill. He pays his own dime to get out there and race every week. And he doesn't have this big facility with all these crew members and people doing this and that, engineers and everything else. He has a small team, and they work hard for what they, what they earn, the position they earn on the racetrack, the money they earn, and uh, that's his dime. So when Joey goes out there and gets dumped and gets pissed off and rips the bumper off with his hands and tosses it out of the car, that is, that's the owner driver right there. Something that's not really known anymore in the sport. So it should be respected and not uh, ridiculed because this is a guy who loves the sport, foots his own bill. There's no Hendrick money. There's no Gibbs money. It's him. And, uh, Man, I'm going to tell you, hell of a guy, works on the car himself, the whole team. So I just want to say, you know, keep your eye on Joey because, you know, he, he's got a good worth ec uh, ethic. And, uh, man, I really, I really want to see his team succeed. He was partnership with Patrick Emerling last year. They started out with 14 cars at the beginning of the season. Unfortunately, some got tore up. And that's the thing. When a car gets tore up for him. It's not easy just to go, yep, yeah, we'll make another one. We'll build another one because that's not the way it works for independent drivers like this. So respect Joey Gase and Joey Gase Racing and all the independents that are out there because that's what created the sport. And when I see stuff like that, it pisses me off, to be honest with you, because uh, obviously you've never been in racing yourself if you say things like this. So uh, anyways, let's move on to the next thing. Now, it's been the big talk ever since Sunday of the finish at Richmond. And uh, you know, like I say, following the race, man, I was mad. I was mad as hell because that was Martin's race. But the one thing that has kind of resonated with me over the last few days, or a couple of days anyways, is to realize it's nobody's race until the checkered flag falls. And that's something that has, it, it don't matter if you're racing on a short track or if you're in the Cup Series or whatever. The race is not over until the checkered flag falls. And even though Martin dominated that race all day, and man, wish he would have won. He deserved to win that race. It didn't happen that way. But here's my problem. Here's my problem right now. And uh, again, dissecting this, I don't have a problem as much with Denny jumping the start like he did. You know, that, uh, 
the leader, he should have the obligation to be the, I mean, he's the point man. He worked for that to get that. In this case, it was in the pits. But uh, either way, you know, you you earn that. And uh, I don't think it's right for, I don't know. I don't want to say things that other people have said about lining up. I listened to Kenny Wallace today, and he was talking about they shouldn't be side-by-side on restarts and everything. And, you know, I, I grasped that in so many ways because all through my race and everything, he lined up single file on a restart. That's the way it went. And now it's different. It's for the fans. It's entertainment. It's exciting. But um, my problem right now is not as much with Denny jumping the start, but with the fact that NASCAR said, oh, we didn't, we didn't see that. And then for today, it to come out to say, well, we did see that. We know that he jumped to start. He didn't wait to the line. And my position is, what the hell is the reason to even have that re- uh, start zone if you're not going to abide by it? And, and that's the thing. Like I say, I'm not pissed at Denny for what he did because he's a racer. And he's out there racing, and he's going for the win, just like everybody else out there was as well. But if NASCAR is going to put this rule down in a book, if you're going to put lines to say this is the restart zone, that's the rules. Stick to them rules. If somebody breaks that rule, so be it. Do the same thing to every driver who does that same thing. If you don't, NASCAR, that makes you look like fools. That makes you look like you're picking and choosing who gets away with stuff and who doesn't. And that's not the way the sport was built. I mean, if you went back and you, if you would, I mean, if you'd asked all the legends of the sport, first of all, that there was going to be a restart zone, and they would have said, what the hell are you talking about? The leader controls the race. That's the way it is. You know, I mean, I could even remember back in my race and days on restarts, you could start halfway down the back stretch. As soon as you want to hit the gas, you hit it. You go. It was a start. That's the way it went. But now there's so much politics into this and so many different things to it that, uh, like I say, oh, man, I would have loved to have seen Martin win that race. He deserved that race. I hate the way everything played out. But in the end, that's the way it played out. Martin, I'm telling you, this weekend is going to be a bullet because uh, that determination right now, knowing he didn't get that win, and he's great at Martinsville. It's going to be a hell of a battle between that 11 and that 19. And me personally, I can't wait for it. But now I'm going to finish this out with one other story, one other subject that uh, kind of touched my nerves as well. Now we all know that the caution that come out at the end of the race that cost Martin Truex Jr. the win was the contact between Carl Larson and Bubba Wallace. And we obviously know there's a history there. There's a big history there take a look at this you can see it Bubba deliberately dumped Kyle and um, then the stuff that ensued after that nobody wants to see that but yet people do want to see that obviously I mean one of my best ever shows I've done on here was because of that and uh, people love controversy that's what it's about and that's what NASCAR is embraced right now is people do love controversy They they like to see the fights I mean honestly to think about it Every episode that I've had that's one of my top episodes is dealing with somebody fighting. Not about the racing. It's about the fighting. So, I, I, I don't want to say I don't understand fans anymore, but uh, if you're just coming for the controversy, and man, you're not a true race fan because you need to watch the racing, the side-by-side action, the strategy. And there was a lot of strategy out there at Richmond this weekend, and a lot of it didn't get to play out because of these things that happened like that. But still in all, to me, it was a great race. Great strategy race for so many. and uh, But to get back to the subject, Bubba, following the race, but let's just listen to this. I wasn't intentional. It's all It all worked out for me. No, it netted you and I promise <laughs> it caught up to me. It's so. all good. Sure, sorry about yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Whatever's <laughs> coming my way, I know it's, I expect it. <laughs> and even following that, so many people, so many comments I've seen across so many different platforms calling them bubbles, calling them this, saying all these different things about them. You know, people learn as they go. And uh, from what from what Bubba did to what he did this past weekend, a hell of a turnaround, a hell of a change. And uh, I like that out of him. I like the fact that he ruffles so many people's feathers as race fans because that builds excitement. That builds the energy that's going on. And for anybody that says he doesn't deserve to be there, Come on, man. You look at the history. There's so many people that get into the sport that are not the drivers that a lot of these short track drivers out there are. But the thing is, 
things happen. And that's the way the sport is today. And like it or leave it. That's basically the way it is. And uh, simple fact is, Bubba's out there. Bubba's not going anywhere. And, and that it brings me to another subject right here that I wanted to touch on. And that's about the Denny Hamlin thing again. Because I'm going to promise you right now, when Martin Truex Jr. retires from racing, you're probably not going to see much of him anymore. Hall of Fame events, something like that, you'll see him. But um, he's going to ride off in the sunset. He's already said that. He's going to buy him a boat. He's going fishing. He's getting away. Denny Hamlin is going to be here for a long time. So for everybody to hate on him, hate on Bubba, which I get it. That's what you want to do, do it, you know. But uh, they're going to be here for a long time because that's the face of the sport right now. That's what's happening. And if Denny never gets a championship, it does not mean he's not one hell of a driver because, man, his stats speak for themselves. And uh, he's also one of the guys that stands up for the drivers, speaks for the drivers, where a lot of other ones just stay reserved. And, you know, I admire that out of him. I've worked with Denny on many commercials. I worked on a lot of Coca-Cola commercials through the years and uh, got to see him firsthand. And, man, I respect, I respect every driver out there. Unless they do something really stupid, I'm going to respect them. But anyways, I'm off my bitch fest right now. I uh, just wanted to get this out because so many times I do these shows and I, I tend to do them to appeal to other things instead of being myself. And this is me. When I'm pissed off about something, I'm going to be pissed about it. And, uh, but I'm also going to take a time to think about it and realize, yeah, that initial reaction that I had may have not been the right one. But anyways, throw your comments down below if you like what I'm doing subscribe button right down there hit that thing let's talk racing because that's what i love to do that's what i'm here for and uh man enjoy to talk it with you anyways we'll put the smile on right now and say hope you're having a great week out there and as always man we'll see you at a checkered flag